GT doors that you're constantly knocking your head on if you're not paying attention. inside the uh, Ford GT. Love these little kind of switches. Start engine, the awesome stick shift. Um, the only bad thing about this shifter is reverse and first are very close together. So you have to be really careful um, when you're going into first to make sure you're not going into reverse and uh, vice versa. But yeah, it's very, very, um, surprisingly enough, an easy car to drive. But yeah, the shifter is amazing. I think this car actually has a, uh, a short shifter um, installed, but the, the um, uh, what do you call it, factory one, OEM one, was, was great as well. Good morning, YouTube. Uh, welcome to another episode of Life of Brian. I am in my 2006 Ford GT and um, just running a quick errand and thought I'd shoot a quick video. Um, take the second exit onto I don't really drive, drive this car too often. I would say maybe once every six weeks, eight weeks, if that. Um, I store uh, several of my cars at a garage, uh, Alar Garage here in Houston. Um, they're fantastic. They uh, they take great care of the cars. They check the batteries. They wipe the cars down. They start them every week just to make sure you know, or I guess minimize the issues of cars just sitting in one place. At the um, roundabout, take the second have, exit uh, onto on Minimax Drive. Uh, facility that does uh, you know any sort of repairs or maintenance you need on your cars but anyways um, yeah I don't really get to drive the car too often but I always get a blast um, it's a blast when I do um, you get a lot of looks when you drive this car there's there's not many Ford GTs on the road um, and um, it's yeah what are my kind of impressions of the initial impressions of the car I'll do a much Turn more right onto West Loop but, North. You know, I'm sure you guys have seen a lot of videos out there. There are a lot of videos out there on YouTube. Uh, Doug DeMuro obviously has done a handful. It's, uh, I believe, one of his favorite cars or one of his dream cars before he hit it uh, officially big. And um, you know, it's it's a it's a really fun car to drive and slightly intimidating because you know the price point on these has really jumped. When I got the car about two years ago, um, they Make were, a -turn, you then know, keep left to merge onto Old Katy Road. Mid two hundreds, threes, uh, beyond that, uh, if you know, depending on the mileage. A lot of these are very low mileage vehicles as well. I have, uh, let me see, this, this and try to find it. Uh, about fourteen thousand, just a little over fourteen thousand on my car. But a lot of these cars are not driven. Um, the owners just kind of. You know, let them sit and treat them morally as uh, as garage queens, uh, which you know I would never do. But you know, I really drive my, or I try to drive all my cars. But you know, when I bought the car, you would be looking at you know at least mid two hundreds, uh, or if you got a really rare rough example, uh, low two hundreds. But I think that'd be pretty much um, an anomaly. But now these cars, I haven't checked in a while, guys, to be honest. But from the last time I checked. These were going pretty consistently well Use the left three, lane to three, keep left to merge onto Old Katy Road. Range. And uh, depending on if you get the special edition one, um, you know, the, the orange and blue Keep left, stripe, then keep left the, toward I-10. You know, you're going to be paying half a million and beyond. So Use the left lane to keep of, left uh, toward I-10. Definitely appreciating, which is awesome. I mean, and kind of unique given they're a Ford. But it's, it's a left. really fun car to drive. The, the shifter is amazing. 
I know I say that about a lot of my cars, but the shifter is just, it's, it's smooth, it's precise. It kind of almost has a gated feeling without the gate, like on my R8. But again, very precise, very, very uh, satisfying to shift in this car. Clutch isn't too bad. It's a little, um, it's, it's a, it takes a little more practice to work this clutch. Use the right uh, two lanes to keep cars. right onto I-10 West towards you know, San Antonio. But it takes a little bit of getting used to. It's a little heavier. Um, I wouldn't compare it to um, my, I had a, uh, a 2004 uh, Dodge Viper for a while and I hated driving that car. The, the clutch was super heavy. My ankle and my cap was always sore after driving that car. The, the shifter was just, I felt like just trying to push a keep baseball right. bat. Into, uh, into gear every time, but this is not anywhere close to that. But it is more substantial and more hefty, I think, the clutch at least, than most of my In other cars. In five miles, take exit but, um, 757 toward Gessner Road. It's great. You can get in a lot of trouble, guys, because there's no, um, there's no, uh, you know, there's no babysitting in this car, you know, there's, I don't think this car even has traction control. Um, so in that regard, I guess it's similar to the, uh, the Viper, but yeah, you put your foot into it just a little bit and you're, you're off. Uh, everything on the car is pretty much stock. Um, I think, I believe there is a pulley that was ins installed on, on this car when I got it. So I think it has a little bit of extra horsepower. Uh, I believe uh, stock, again, don't quote me on this guys, I could be completely off here. I think it came with 500 and 530 or 515. Again, don't quote me. I, uh, I think um, with the pulley, this my car gets about like an extra 35 horsepower. But other than that, um, everything is stock. As I'm sure you guys know, these cars came with very few options. You basically could get a stripe, you could choose the color of your brake calipers, and whether or not you wanted the upgraded uh, stereo system. And that's pretty much it. Everything else was basically from the factory. All the all the cars look like that. Which you know, I guess sometimes it's a good thing. You know, you don't have to make a lot of decisions. But um, the car, uh, from a driving standpoint, it's the closest thing I think I'll ever have to driving a race car. Uh, I haven't driven an F1, you know, hopefully I marked it off my bucket list. Um, haven't really driven any hyper cars, but of all the cars I've ever driven or personally owned, this is definitely the closest uh, feeling to a, a race car, which again, it's based on the Le, the Le Mans. Um, uh, car in the 60s that beat Ferrari I believe it was, I think it was three years in a row and uh, it's an homage to that vehicle and I, I really think the, the, the styling on this car is just amazing if you guys get a chance definitely check out the video that Jay Leno did with the designer he seems like a really interesting guy a super talented guy but uh, just like listening to him discuss how he was able to maintain the essence and the spirit and quite honestly even the look of the of the earlier uh earlier GT40, but uh, bring it into a modern era, um, it, it's amazing, it, it's, it's spot on, and this, that's really, again, harkens back to my earlier video where I was kind of bashing the NSX, uh, where they, they could have done the same thing, they could have had a, you know, an homage to the first generation through the second generation, uh, you know, maintain the essence, the spirit, at least some of the styling cues, but the NSX, the second generation NSX, although a nice looking car, I think failed miserably. The 4GT, just an amazing, amazing, a beautiful car. Great, great, great work by the designer. But um, yeah, the, the car again, is just a blast to drive. You put your foot into it a little bit. I don't know if you guys can hear that, but it just, it, it, it takes off, it takes off on you. Um, I believe it's a supercharged V8, if I'm not mistaken. The second generation, I believe, is a V6. Um, of course, in two all miles, of take exit 757 toward Gessner Road. Make whatever, I think it was, I'm not sure what the horsepower is on the second generation, but um, the, the first generation is, is very bare, bare bones in the sense that you know it's a stick shift, it's a six speed, uh, six shift, uh, six speed manual, um, it's a V8, um, and yeah, there's not a lot of gadgets or or you know, stuff going on with the car. It's very much a driver's car. It's very much a, a car for the enthusiast. The, it's a little bit, it's a little intimidating driving this car, I'll be honest with you guys. I know Doug DeMiro mentioned that as well. When you kind of start thinking, and this is, again, when I got the car, guys, it was kind of before the prices even exploded further. But it, driving this car around is like, you realize, hey, you're kind of driving a car. And, um, you know, the doors are kind of a little bit of a hassle because when you park, you have to park at the very end of the road. 
uh, and I'll show it in, in my vid in my clip later on of the door, but it opens super wide and then there's that ceiling above, the roof above your head. So if you're parked next to a car, you have to crawl out literally on your hands and knees. And I've had to do that a few times, even in my garage at home, but you know, whatever. The price to pay of driving a, a 4GT, right? But it's a little intimidating. I don't, that's maybe one of the reasons why I don't drive this car a lot, guys, is that it, it's, it's, it's super expensive and you know, if someone hits you, it's pretty much game over. Um, you know, they're not gonna have the insurance to cover it. But, you know, it's uh, other than being a little intimidated and, and and knowing how much power you have and there's not really any of those um, babysitting, um, you know, again, I don't think it has traction control. Uh, it, it's not gonna save you. You know, if you wanna go nuts in this car, you're gonna go, you're, you're gonna lose it. Uh, I've seen a, I forgot what the, the YouTube channel is. Take exit 757 full, like, toward Gessner Road. Something like that. And uh, the guys, the two guys there were doing a, um, a video review. And I think both of them, or one of them for sure spun out and the other one almost lost control as well. But uh, I tried to drive like a grandmother in this car. I don't want to take any chances, both not just for the car, but for my own personal health and, and long-term, you know, wellness. But, uh, you know, my mission, my initial impressions, guys, is the cars, it, it, it's really fun to drive. Again, you get a lot of attention. Some, Use you know, the you left want, lane to make a U-turn. You, know, you get a lot of attention, a lot of thumbs up. You see quite, uh, you know, quite a few Lambos, Aventadors, Ferraris on the road. At least where I, where I am in Houston, Houston area. But uh, you don't see. I've seen. Um, Make a U turn. One, then turn right into the one parking lot. One or two lot. other GTs, but they were the second gen. I've actually not seen a first generation uh, GT on the road other than mine. So again, that it, it's it's obviously a unicorn. They didn't make too many of these. They they only produced these for 2005, 2006, and because of. Um, changes in uh safety regulations something to do with like the headlights or something to do with the front windshield uh, the requirements changed uh where they couldn't make these cars anymore because they wouldn't pass uh you know those federal safety rules stay so, in the right lane only two years guys in production uh, not a lot of these and um most of these cars are treated as garage queens the owners do not take them out so that's another reason why you will not see these out on the road which may be one of the reasons why a lot of people, when I see them, I guess when they see me, they're, they're kind of shocked to see the car. Turn right into but, the you parking know, again, lot. I like driving my cars. I think you should drive drive cars. And again, in fact, I'm driving my car right now to go run an errand. Uh, it, it's pretty useless. It's not very practical. Uh, there is no trunk uh, or frunk. Um, you know, obviously you have room for a passenger and that's it. You've entered the parking but, lot for um, your destination. Sorry, guys, but turn that off. But, um... But yeah, it's a, it's a it's a blast to drive. It's something where if you ever wanted to be in a race car, this is going to be you know you don't have half a million. Well, now I guess that would be different guys, but at the time you didn't have half a million to spend. This was I think your best bet. Uh, I mean maybe the the twelve seat the twelve seat could kind of give you a similar feeling as well. But I just got to uh, just got to the store, and uh, let me go ahead and turn off the engine here. But. I really, I really enjoy the car. I honestly wish I could drive it more, but just because uh, it's sitting in the, the garage, um, and uh, again, it's a little intimidating to drive because if someone rams into me or I hit a curb, it's it's gonna be kind of pricey to fix this thing. But knock on wood, I haven't had really any issues, any maintenance issues. It's been pretty reliable, and that's the one thing that I, I heard about these these Ford GTs is again because it's a Ford. As someone put it, uh, they didn't know that they weren't allowed to make a crappy exotic or a crappy supercar. So they actually made it pretty, pretty bulletproof. I haven't had any problems whatsoever. Uh, I haven't had any, you know, gremlins or warning lights or issues like that. Everything it runs smoothly, works. Uh, everything feels very solid. I think it was a small dedicated team at Ford that built these cars. And, and um, they definitely kind of have that hand built uh, feel to them. Um, but, you know, it's, you know, you hear about the doors, the quirky doors and, you know the the seats with the um, the little holes in them for ventilation, which actually don't provide any ventilation, but it's more again an homage to the the GT40. And you know, by the way, these seats are actually very comfortable. They're very comfortable. You may think having these little holes in your back, but it's actually very comfortable. And of course, the the the, uh, the great shifter. That's uh, definitely one of my favorites. And the very small steering wheel. It's it's. For the car, you think it's kind of undersized or whatnot, but I, I think it's actually the perfect size steering wheel. All steering wheels should be this size. But yeah, I mean, no complaints, guys. I love this car, really love the car. 
Um, it's it's a very fun car to drive. Uh, I, I've, I I really don't like Ford. It's not a Mustang fan at Mustang fan at all. But I always really love the look of the GT40. And when I saw these cars come out, I was like, man, I really wish, hope I can get one one day. Really love the look. And thankfully, I was blessed enough to grab one. So I'll be hanging on to this for a while. Um, uh, I don't think I'll be selling it anytime soon. But, you know, just wait for the values to keep on appreciating. But I will definitely do a more of an in-depth review, guys, at a later time. But just want to shoot a quick video of me running an errand in the car. Um, hope you guys like it. Let me know if you guys have if you guys have one, if you've driven one. What are your thoughts on the Ford GT? Uh, hope you guys like the video. Give it a like and a comment below. Support the channel. And I'll see you guys uh, on the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.